How many of you have ever went to Chuck E. Cheese as a child? You probably remember it as a happy, fun time full of arcade games and pizza. What if what went on at Chuck E. Cheese was less than happy and the restaurant was actually full of murderous animatronics wanting to kill the night security guard? That is the plot of Five Nights at Freddy's in a nutshell. A demented Chuck E. Cheese sort of restaurant that has animatronics that want to murder your face and cram you into a robotic exoskeleton that will essentially turn you into a bloody pulp. Did I mention these animatronics are supposedly haunted by the ghosts of children who were murdered at the original Freddy Fazbear's restaurant? Well, no wonder they're pissed. Oh, and to make matters worse, you're only getting paid like $100 for five nights of working in this hellhole. Not worth it. Five Nights at Freddy's has quickly become one of the most popular and overhyped horror franchises of our time, and it's easy to see why. The concept is just plain spooky. Since the first game released in summer of 2014, Scott Cawthon has somehow managed to release a new game in the franchise only months after the last has been released to the general public. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 came out a whopping three months after the first, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 came out in March 2015, and Five Nights at Freddy's 4 came out just four months after that. Pretty impressive, really. With each game, good ol' Scott has managed to implement a brand new game mechanic or two, and also filled us with just the right amount of dread for the inevitable jump scares every time one of the animatronics kills you. I know jump scares are a cheap way to scare, but seriously, look at this shit! While the original Five Nights at Freddy's had only five animatronics, Freddy, Foxy, Chica, Bonnie, and Golden Freddy, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 brought some brand new baddies to the table to make us shit ourselves. There were more cutesy versions of the original four animatronics, which were somehow more terrifying, the withered versions of Bonnie and Chica with the former having no face left, Mangle, who is essentially a female version of Foxy that has been ripped apart by overzealous kids and put back together again probably hundreds of times, Balloon Boy, who is one of the most annoying animatronics to keep at bay, and last but not least we were introduced to this creepy fucker who could only be convinced to stay in his hidey hole and not insta-killing you by making sure his music box stays wound up. How are we even keeping it wound? It's in a completely different room than we're in! In Five Nights at Freddy's 3, we were introduced to an animatronic that has a corpse, presumably the murderer of the children I mentioned earlier, inside it. Springtrap was the only real threat in this game. All of the other animatronics were the result of hallucinations suffered by the main character in the event they were unable to keep their ventilation system running properly. Thanks for throwing in that curveball, by the way, Scott Cawthon. Really, that's just what the franchise needed. After all, checking the fucking cameras and conserving power wasn't nearly hard enough. Then, in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, we play as a young boy trying to survive the night in his own home, tormented by nightmare versions of the animatronics that scare him so much. The animatronics, the nightmare versions, are absolutely terrifying, sporting razor-sharp teeth and glowing eyes, but in spite of all that, it still isn't the scariest game in the franchise. That honor goes to this game. What the fuck? Five games later, Five Nights at Freddy's has shown absolutely no signs of slowing down. A Five Nights at Freddy's film has been announced to be in the works, though a release date has not yet been determined. There's also a game slated for release this fall about Freddy Fazbear's sister location, which was briefly mentioned in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 by the oh-so-helpful phone guy. This game will introduce at least four new animatronics, and get this, they're all female. One, dubbed Baby, is basically Balloon Boy if Balloon Boy wore a dress and had pigtails. What will the story of the sister location reveal? It's too early to say. One thing we can assume is that, much like its predecessors, Sister Location will include a sixth night once the first five have been completed, and the infamous 2020-2020 mode, in which all of the animatronics can be maxed out to be insanely overpowered and will leave gamers all over the world screaming in equal parts fear and rage as they waste hours of their lives trying to survive six in-game hours of psychological trauma. Please, I beg of you. I beg every fiber of your delicious, fluffy body, please let me have as much time as you can give me. One thing we can be damn sure of is that someone will inevitably do naughty fan art of Freddy or Foxy with their female counterparts, thereby providing more nightmare fuel for Five Nights at Freddy's fans everywhere. Or wank material. Shut up, I don't know what you weirdos out there are into. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is the first episode of a new series on my channel, so I'd love to know what you thought of it. Did you think there was something I could have done better or just differently? Sound off in the comments below to let me know, or feel free to suggest other games or franchises you'd like to see featured in this series. And as always, push that like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to my channel to show your support. Thanks again, and until next time, this is Semantics signing off. Bye!